upon his, his family, his companions, who call to the way of their Lord with wisdom and excellent preaching. And may Allah be pleased with them all. And what follows of that salutation, I advise you as well as I advise myself to first fear Allah and thereafter be obedient to him. We thank Allah. We thank him for guiding us. We thank him for giving us the privilege to be among those who submit to his will. And we pray that Allah will increase our faith and we pray that we are among those who are believers. It's a blessing to be with you today here at Jum'ah. You know, there's a whole chapter in the Quran called Jum'ah. And if you read this surah, from start to finish. It's dealing with many things, but one thing is dealing with is a love for material things. A love for material things. And it also deals with a condition where you have divine guidance, but you don't follow. So we don't have time to go through the whole khutbah, I mean, the whole uh, surah. But we want to look at what Allah says in the Quran about this day. Now, now there's, a, there's a number of hadith and a, there's a number of other traditions that we can that we could uh, talk about. But I want to focus on what Allah says about Juma. It's important, brothers and sisters, for us to recognize what Allah has singled out as important. Why He has singled it out as important. So. Allah says, مَثَلُ الَّذِينَ حُمِّلُوا الطَّرَاطَ ثُمَّ لَمْ يَحْمِلُوهَا كَمَثَلِ الْحِمَارِ يَحْمِلُوا أَسْفَارَ بِئَسَ مَثَلُ الْقَوْمِ الَّذِينَ كَذَّبُوا بِأَيَّةِ اللَّهِ وَاللَّهُ لَا يَحْدِ الْقَوْمِ الظَّالِمِينَ Allah says, the example of those who were given the law but failed to carry it is that of a donkey who is carrying books and does not know what is in those books. This is a very powerful use of metaphor. Because think about a donkey. You know, there's other ways that this word, this uh, there's one that is translated in a way that is acceptable to say it, but it's Juma and it's not flattering. Think about the stubbornness of a donkey. And you know, have you if, if you've ever heard a donkey bray, the braying of a donkey? I don't know if you've ever heard it, but but there's a out where I live, there's a donkey that
metaphor for those who have divine knowledge and don't follow it. If we submit that the Quran is the book of Allah, and we accept that it is the perfect book, the book about which there's no doubt in it, Why would we not follow the Quran? It's a question we have to ask ourselves. And why are we looking, always looking outside the Quran for answers? What has happened, what has infiltrated the Muslim Ummah that we're always relying on sources outside the Quran without first going through the Qur'an itself. If you remember, Omar ibn al-Khattab, when it came to him, the idea of collecting the sayings of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he resisted. And he said, I don't want to be like a people who make their own book. And they get so involved in their own book that they forget the word of God. That they forget the Quran. And I never remember once, I, I never, I'll never forget, I was sitting with Imam Qasim once. Imam Qasim Ahmed, may Allah forgive him his sins and bless him with paradise, whose legacy is still producing students of the Quran to this very day. And I'll make it, I'll talk about that a little bit later. But he taught, they did this, this leadership book. Very beautiful book. It will quote Imam Muhammad, rahimah alayhi, then it will give Quran, and then it will give Hadith, and then it will quote Imam Muhammad again, and then give Quran, and give Hadith. And he told me when Imam Muhammad saw it, he said, this is good. He said, but you have a whole lot of what I said, and then a little bit of the Quran and a little bit of what Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam said. He said, actually, it should be the opposite. He said, you should have what the Quran says and what the Prophet says, then what I say. Now, see the logic of a man protecting his ummah, his community, those who look to him for leadership and guidance, protecting them with the same caution that Omar ibn al-Khattab had, that we don't produce all these books, all these books of commentary and things like that, yet forget to first go to the word of the, the word of Allah and study the Quran. Brothers and sisters, the Quran is more accessible to all of us than it has been in the past. Learning is more accessible than any other time in history. If you wanted to do major study in religion, you may have to go seclude yourself someplace. You may have to travel someplace just to get isolation. If you, wanna, if you want to study the Quran or, or study great teachers, you may well have to move to their city. Now, the very difficult thing. Nowadays, all you have to do is log on. Just log on. I was at home last night and my daughter Fatima was listening to a Tajweed class. She was taking a Tajweed class. The Tajweed class was taught by Sister Anissa Dewan. And she was going over all the different rules of Tajweed. And I said, wow, my daughter knows more about Tajweed than I do. My daughter knows more about reciting the Quran than I do. And she was studying in her own living room. So brothers and sisters, the Quran is accessible to us. Arabic is accessible to you. Now, I know people who are born 
reading and writing Arabic, they take it for granted. Uh, just, they don't, they don't, they don't value, they may not, that's not fair for me to say. Sometimes they may not value it as much as if you didn't, if you didn't grow up reading and writing it. And it used to be very challenging to access classes where you can learn how to read the Quran. Now, you can have a tutor come into your living room and you don't even have to leave your house. So whatever barriers used to exist to us accessing the Quran, gone. I was into another class last night. My daughter was in a different class. She was in a grammar class. And they were talking about the present tense verb passive voice and how you see it and, 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 and how it's discovered. And, I, and all I could do is smile. You know, these concepts that used to be very challenging and difficult. There was a time hardly anybody could even read the Quran in Arabic. Now it's commonplace to have discussions on grammar, deep grammar. So you and I have an opportunity, brothers and sisters. We can't say we didn't have an opportunity to learn. We didn't understand. No, brothers and sisters. It's all been made available to us. So let's not fit this parable of a donkey who's carrying all these books yet not benefiting from them. And it's not just studying the Quran to learn Arabic or studying Arabic just to know Arabic. It's studying the Arabic to understand the Quran, but not just so that you can say you understand it but so that you can apply it in your life. Because if you know it all, you can be a hafiz of the Quran. But if you're a hafiz of the Quran and you're out committing fornication or adultery, then you are not benefiting from the knowledge in that Quran. You're not preserving the meaning of the Quran. You memorized it but it's not benefiting you in your lives. So brothers and sisters, we don't want to study it just so that we can say we know it. We want to study it so that we can go into the word of Allah and understand the word of Allah and study it for your growth and development. They receive the book, yet they don't carry it. Oh, what a bad, bad example that is. That's like those who lie on the signs of Allah. Now this is speaking about something a little more sinister. This isn't just, this, this part of this ayah isn't just talking about those who study the book and don't follow it. It's talking about those who understand the meaning yet change it when they speak about it for their own benefit. But those days, listen brothers and sisters, there used to be a day one person knew the Quran and everybody would go to him to learn it, everybody would go to her, or a few individuals. It's that those days don't exist anymore. No, you have access, even if you don't like the scholars in America. Let's say you don't like the scholars in America. I have no issue with the scholars in America. I benefit from the scholars in America. But let's say you don't like the scholars in America. If you're from Indonesia, you can pick, you can just press a button and access your scholar now. If you're from Pakistan, press a button. If you're from Malaysia, press a button. If you're from Tajikistan, press a button. Uzbekistan, press a button. Africa, press a button. If the, if the scholars in America isn't speaking to your mind and your psyche and your worldview and how you, you just can't relate to, to all this new stuff, you can find access to who It's so easy nowadays. 
So access whomever soothe what you need in your soul to progress and live the word of God and understand the Quran and apply it to your life. أقول لك على هذا أستغفر الله ولكم الحمد لله رب العالمين. الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على رسوله الكريم محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين أما أما بعد جيب بلا مسلم as we conclude, Allah says, Ya ayyuhal ladheena amanu idha nudiya lissalati min yawm al-jum'ah fas'au ila dhikrillah wa dharu bay'ah thalikum khayru lakum in kuntum ta'lamun فَإِذَا كُدِيَتِ الصَّلَاةِ فَلْتَشِرُوا فِي الْأَرْضِ وَابْتَغُوا مِنْ فَضْلِ اللَّهِ وَاذْكُرُوا اللَّهَ كَثِيرًا نَعَلَّكُمْ تُفْلِحُمْ وَإِذَا رَاوْا أَوْ تِجَارَةٍ أَوْ لَحْوٍ فَانْدُوا إِلَيْهَا وَتَرَكُوكَ قَائِمًا كُلْ مَا إِنَّ اللَّهِ خير من اللحو ومن التجارة والله خير رازقين. Allah says, "O you who believe, when the call for salah is made on the day of Juma, hasten to the remembrance of Allah and cease your business. That is better for you if you but knew. And then when you finish the salah, disperse through the land and seek the bounty of Allah." And remember Allah frequently so that you may prosper. We'll, we'll have to come back in a future Juma and explore more about Juma ah and what it means. What, uh, talk about it's uh, the the uh, the the, con the uh, uh, obligatory nature of praying in congregation. Talk about the khutbah and then the then the salah, and and how honored the human being should be, that Allah allows him to give education in the worship service. We'll have to come back later and talk about that because it's beyond. <laughs> the time that we have today. But the first, but what I want to emphasize today is the love for material things. There's only around five minutes left, so I can't get too far into it. So Allah says, when you hear the call for prayer, first out, first out, ila zikrullah. Come to the remembrance of Allah, and it and it and it's it's, it's to haste, it's to do it quickly, not slowly. You know, when you're on Hajj or Umrah, you make sa'i, right? And you know, sa'i means to struggle, right? Sa'a means to struggle. But sa'i is done quickly, right? It, there's a certain areas that you that you that you, you speed your pace up, your pace up. So when you're coming to Juma, you come with enthusiasm. When you hear the call, why that obey? And leave your business, leave it. And this is better for you if you knew. Then Allah says that when you finish prayer, disperse through the earth and seek the bounty of God, and remember a lot much that you may be successful. Allah does not command you to forsake the world. Allah does not command you to forsake material advancement. Juma is a day to remind us to have balance. To have balance. And it's very interesting 
especially for us as Americans, that Juma is on what has been historically payday in America. Now, I know it's changed some. Payday might be the first and the 15th. But for the most part, Friday is payday in America. You might get paid every Friday, every other Friday. Now, some people get paid on the first of the month, and some people get it on the first and the 15th. But Friday is still payday in America. And now, isn't that a mercy that Allah made Juma on payday? It makes me want to, uh, my employees aren't Muslim. If I had a Muslim employee, I pay him after Juma. I pay him or her after Juma. After the prayer, it hit his bank account. So leave off your business and hasten to the remembrance of Allah. Listen, then it doesn't say sit in the masjid for 10 hours after Juma, making dhikr, praying, reading Quran. No, it says when the prayer is over, go back out in the world and seek the bounties of Allah. But it also says, and remember Allah. So you don't forget Allah when you leave Juma? Imam Qasim told me once uh, there was a, a, a man who, who sold dope and he was coming to Juma. And if you're selling dope, we want you to keep coming to Juma. Just don't sell dope anywhere near the masjid. No, you're going to stop. You keep coming to Juma, you're going to stop selling dope. You keep coming and hearing the word of Allah, it's going to clean you up. I was, I was working in another masjid and a man was selling synthetic marijuana right out of his store. And they came to me and said, man, we got to lead a protest. He can't sell dope out of his store and then come to the masjid. And while I agree with them, I thought it was very important for him to keep coming to the masjid because if he was going to find help, it was going to be coming to the masjid. But he can't sell synthetic marijuana on the masjid parking lot, then we have a problem. Then we have to regulate. So Allah says, once you finish, now think about this. After you finish Juma, go back out and seek the bounties of Allah, but remember Allah much. So if you have a nefarious way that you're making money, once you come to Juma, you hear about Allah, you pray, you lean back out, when you go back out to your nefarious activities, you will ask yourself, is this really pleasing to God? Should I be making my money in a way that's not approved by Allah? Then Allah says, yet when they see a bargain or some sport, they rush to it and leave you standing. Now, before I, before I studied the seed of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, I, didn't, I couldn't really appreciate this. But when I studied the seed of the Prophet, they were praying Juma. And the Prophet was leading the Salah. And a caravan came to town. And they literally left him standing in Salah to try to be the first person to the caravan to get the best deal to try to get the best products before anybody else got there. And then Allah reveals in the Quran Kul ma indallahi indallahi ma indallahi khayrun min al-lahwi aw wa min at-tijara khayrun min al-lahwi say what is with Allah is better 
than whatever bargain you were going to get by leaving prayer. The guidance for your soul, the upliftment of the soul, the elevation of your soul, whatever whatever uh, product you were going to get by being the first one there, no, what God has in store for you in terms of the enrichment of your soul, growth as a human being, is better than whatever deal you were going to get by being the first one to the caravan. And just name it. In, in, the sixth, in the sixth century, it was a caravan, but it's whatever it is today, it is. Whatever the equivalent is. And then it says, Wallahu khayru razikin. And Allah is the best to provide. Do you know that if you submit to Allah and you finish your prayer, Allah may bless you with a, a deal that was twice as good as the one you were going to get when you left prayer? And this is just not talking about one instance. This is giving you a logic on how to live your life. And you see how Allah set this all up by saying those who have the law, but don't follow it. They're not donkeys carrying heavy books. They're not benefiting from it. Then he goes through and then he talks about you deciding wealth and business over worship. So you see the natural progression? Now, once God told them this, see, before he told them this, they weren't donkeys. Nah, because they hadn't been admonished. But once Allah reveals this in the Quran, they've been admonished. So now if they do it again, what's that old saying we used to say, if the shoe fits? Oh, may Allah protect us. May Allah guide us. May Allah forgive us. May he increase our faith. May he increase our understanding. May he have mercy on us, overlook our shortcomings, blot out our inequities. Help us become better servants of his. Rabbina atina fi dunya hasanatan wa fi l'akhirati hasanatan wa kina adab Oh Allah, give us the good of this life and give us the good of the next and protect us from the torment of the fire. Walhamdulillah, ya Rabbil Alameen. Ameen, al Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. Ashadu in la ilaha illallah. Ashadu in Muhammad Rasulullah. Ayyad al-Sulat, Ayyad al-Salah. Allah, al Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. La ilaha illallah, Islamu wa ahtadilu. Make your lines even and straight. As much as you can with distancing. Uh, if, 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 if the brothers, I know we're trying to keep six feet, but when you come in, realize the whole back area is for sisters. So try to try to keep that in mind and, and don't push them out. Try to make sure that we accommodate our women in shelter. Allahu Akbar. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen Ar-Rahman Ar-Rahim Maliki Yawm Al-Din Iyaka Na'budu wa Iyaka Nasta'in Ihdina Sirat Al-Mustaqim Sirat Al-Ladhina An'amta Alayhim غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين والتين والزيتون وطور سينين وهذا البلد الأمين لقد خلقنا الإنسان في أحسن تصميم ثم رددناه أسفل ساتمين إلا الذين آمنوا وعملوا صالحات فلهم أجر غير ممنون فما يكذبك بعد بالدين أليس الله بأحكم الحاكمين
الله أكبر سمي الله لمن حمده الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين إهدينا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين أنعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين قل هو الله أهد الله صمد لم يلد ولم يولد ولم يكن له كفوا أهد الله أكبر سمع الله لمن حمده الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر السلام عليكم ورحمة الله السلام عليكم ورحمة الله السلام عليكم 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 Donations from the community, though. So please make a donation on your way out, however big or however small. Whatever you can do easily, and may Allah reward you. Well, I'm like, we've started opening up now for the uh, five big prayers. We have not established the uh, uh, five prayers as yet, but we are open to the Azul, the Asa. Mark Ribbon and Chef. So we encourage those who are in the area to come out of uh, uh, those prayers. And we're really trying to increase our presence in the neighborhood because we've had uh, uh, the criminal activity in this neighborhood has, 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 has begun to grow. Uh, they're selling narcotics and doing whatever, you know. So I think once we increase our presence here, because we've closed up for about two years because of COVID. But once we increase our presence, we get, we get involved in neighborhood, I think we can change that whole situation. Uh, so also, uh, we, we go, we're, plan, we're planning to uh, put the neighborhood back in the hood and anti-drug campaign. So if you have any girls who are interested in participating in that, uh, you can check with me and I can, I can let you know uh, who in the hood begin to plan for that. Uh, so the uh, the uh, different ways to donate are uh, posted on the cat, the cat box. So you, you need to put your money in the cat box or 
there's the cash app, there's the PayPal, there's the website. But all that will be listed on the chat box so you can uh, see which, which would be more convenient to you. I just number eight. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Thank you all for logging on today. Uh, I will be reading off the announcements shortly. Here are our community announcements for November and December 2021. Our virtual chutbah is available every Friday at 1.30 p.m. Central Standard Time at Mass JWDM. At Mercy Community Center, our adjusted times are in the corner and our broadcast happens at 12.30 p.m. You can find both of these links on the, the Facebook and YouTube sites of the respective masjids. Our in-person Juma is available again at Masjid Waratuddin Muhammad. Um, we're going through a phase three opening and our Juma, our khutbah time is at 1.30 p.m. and our salat time is at 2 p.m. Please follow all of the uh, guidelines on screen when you come. Masjid WDM is making it easier to donate and help the community to keep growing and working in the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We're asking 100 believers to commit to donating just $50 per month. Scan the QR code to get started. Mercy Community Center is also going through a phased reopening in person. Um, our 12.30 p.m. Uh, khutbah starts at 2.30 and the salat is at 1. That's virtual and in person. And our 1.30 p.m. khutbah at Mercy Community Center um, is in person only. The Mercy Community Center in Masjid El Quran mm -hmm. invites you to help spread the mercy for the next 30 days. Become one of the merciful 303. Use the QR code below to start your $30 recurring donation. Snap, donate, and alhamdulillah. Our ta'aleem slash public address is available and broadcasted every Sunday at 1.30 p.m. Central Standard Time. The first Sunday of the month, it's uh, delivered by the Office of Imams. The second is delivered by a pioneer. The third is delivered by a youth. Or young adult, and the third and the fourth is our Almazan slash sisters um, Sunday Ta'lim. Tune in for those. Your zakat and donations are needed for Masjid Warafuddin Muhammad. You can donate on the website, Zelle, PayPal, or Cash app um, at any of the links below. Your zakat and donations are also needed to support Mercy Community Center programming. You can donate by going to mercycc.org slash donation. Muslimanites is a sisters group that my cousin and I started. Please send an email to the address below, muslimanites at gmail.com, if you're interested in joining. We have meetings for our 13 through 18 group and for our 18 through 30 group. And it's a great way to meet new sisters and to start building online community. Our new Muslim orientation is available on Sundays at 3 p.m. and is um, offered by Imam Elijah Slahuddin to join. Please go to http slash tiny.cc slash new Muslim class or email Elijah at masterwdmohammed.com. Our sisters Khalaka is every second and fourth Saturday from 7.30 to 9.30 a.m. Central Standard Time. It's women only and to gain access, please email Salima Cogbill at gmail.com. It's not too late to be a part of Master WDM's fundraising donor wall for the Ibrahim Kamaluddin Community Center. If you'd like to have one of Allah's beautiful names represent you or, or your loved ones on the wall, um, follow the instructions on screen. And if you have any questions, email syscindira at gmail.com. Or it might have been syscindira at uh, masjidwdmuhammad.com. Go back and double check that slide in our recording. Those are our community announcements. Thank you so much for joining us today. And we pray you all have a blessed Jum'ah Friday. 
Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu.